Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the 18th session of Midnight Moments. So this is the final week of Ramadan and our last few sessions of this series. Um, for the past few weeks now, it's been it's gone by so quick. Um, but for the past few weeks, we've been trying to increase our spiritual experience of this blessed month, exploring, started, started the month exploring presence and contemplation, and then week of self-reflection. And now as we've been moving towards the end of the month, we've been talking about ways of uh, instilling these practices and how they can influence our way of walking in the world and practical, practical approaches to changing our inner state. And uh, if we look back to how we started the month, we were talking about the concept of halwa and this sort of forced halwa, forced retreat that many of us are in because of the coronavirus situation. And we talked about how this we're positioned in this month of Ramadan to really to to go into seclusion, and that you know this is why we've been focusing on this internal process of being with the self and self reflection. This time to go internal, but then we talked about how you know this is for a time period, right? The one twelfth of the year that we have this retreat of Ramadan, um, and how you know, things happen in cycles in this way where we have to come and, and, and spend time in reflection, spend time by ourselves, spend time internally, um, and, and moving away from the external and the social and the world. But now in terms of Ramadan, this, that one twelfth time is coming to an end. And this comparison or this correlation with the coronavirus situation is we, we don't know when this is going to end. You know, for many people, they're still in lockdown. I know here where I live, there's there's even more increasing restrictions. And so some of us will still be in seclusion with this social distancing. Um, and so there becomes this question of how, how, we, how we're going to balance social isolation and social engagement. And we need to find a balance, right? Because even in Ramadan, there is always a balance between what we're what we're supposed to be doing with our time is social and individual, or social and, and sort of this seclusion, right? Um, in Ramadan's past, we've had more experience of it being social. We've going to iftars and going to tarawih, and you know, for many people, that becomes the biggest part of Ramadan. And now we've had time to have more of this time for self-reflection. Um, but the balance between these two spheres is really integral to the deen. You know, we have times for community and we have times for seclusion. Um, uh, and there's wisdom in both of these things. They each offer us something different and unique and necessary for our development. And so as we think about leaving this month where we've had perhaps an increase in the, in the, in the internal aspect, we need to start thinking about balancing between orient, our orientation to community and self, particularly even in, in regards to our relationship to Islam, our relationship to the deen. Um, I find that a lot of people I talk to have their experience of Islam, their experience of being Muslim is about a social interaction. It's about going to the masjid. It's about being in community. It's about this identity with others about being Muslim. And, and for many people, they, they haven't had this individual internal self-reflective experience of what it means to be Muslim or in a state of Islam. Um, and, you know, this comes from multiple things. Islam, most Muslim cultures are collectivist. And absolutely, 
there is this value in Islam that's more than cultural, that is about connecting with people. It's about putting yourself, putting others before yourself, about um, how, how important community is. This is, a, this is a very important essential value. Uh, but it's often, you know, at the same time, we, we, are, we are directed to work on ourselves alone and be and I spend time alone and spend time internally reflecting. Um, we stand before Allah alone, right? We're not with our community. And that aspect of this internal reflection and this, you know, I've heard a lot of people through these talks this month saying, you know, this is, this is sort of waking me up to this new experience of this internal dimension. Um, and so this, this can get neglected often. Um, because a lot of times people's people's orientation, just how they've learned Islam or how they've understood is their orientation is is solely as this social experience and this outward identity. Um, and partly that can be a cultural aspect, a cultural orientation or how people have learned to orient themselves and how the community is with one another. But it's also partly uh, an avoidance of the self. As human beings, we, we, we tend to avoid what we have to face. And that can be easy by having this outward experience. Um, and so it's really um, important that we understand how to balance these. It's not about valuing one or over the other. It's not about, um, you know, saying, understanding yourself in relation to, oh, well, I'm more of a people person, I'm more of an introvert, I'm more of an extrovert. extrovert. That may be true with your uh, tendency of your personality and who you are, but really our whole goal is to come into balance and to use the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the marker for this perfected personality, right? So we're, we're looking to bring ourselves into, uh, to, to emulate his character, uh, not to just say, well, this is how I am, but to strive to be more like his, to, to, to emulate his character, which was balanced. Um, if we look at the life of the Prophet wasallam, he was with people most of the day, and he was alone most of the night with his Lord. Um, he had time with family, he had time in the community, he had time with himself. And this was even on a daily basis. If you look at this, the daily life routine of the Prophet, you'll see all of these things in balance. Um, and he had extend, you know, extended periods of time in the cave by himself and also intensely engaged with the community, being present with people in relationship. And we, hear, we hear about how beautiful he was with being with in individual people and making them feel like they were the only person in the world when he's paying attention to them, right? So this real deep engagement with social interaction. Um, and so it's really important that we understand that this is not just, you know, this is a, this is a part of our DNA because it's a part of bringing ourselves into um, following his example, which is bringing ourselves back into our fitra. So we need these things. We need both of them. Um, and, and we need to learn to integrate these, both of these spheres of, of interaction into our lives on a daily basis. Um, and, and maybe for some of us, through these sessions, um, we've been discovering some new experiences of, of having this internal reflection and going inward. And this is what we've been talking about, self-reflection. I just want to make it clear that not this doesn't mean cutting yourself off from people. It's for a time. Uh, and we still need people. We need people to grow. We need people to come to understand ourselves. Um, the, the believer is a mirror for the believer. And this is a very, very crucial an integral part of self-development, self self-reflection. 
it's not just by reflecting in isolation that we learn and that we grow. So for those of us who are in lockdown and in isolation uh, and, and may still be for some time to come, we need to make sure that we are making an effort to connect, to connect with people, to be um, within a community and reaching out to try to find community. And, you know, that may, you know, there's different aspects of that. What it means is, is, is engaging with people. Uh, so even if you're in, you're in lockdown with family and you have people at home, this is potentially, this is an opportunity to get closer to them, you know, and, and sometimes the way you get closer is by working through the things that are keeping you apart, um, working through your stuff with them, you know, and, and if you've been placed in this situation with these people, it's likely that Allah has put you there in this position to do some work with them. So it's not, you know, it, going to your room and locking yourself in and say, I'm going to reflect on myself. The work on the self can be going out and, 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 and really deeply engaging with them and being patient. And, and this is an opportunity to use some of the strength that we've gained in these moments of presence, right? When we're, when we're self-reflecting and we're, we're focusing and we're centering in the self, it builds strength. It builds and this ability to be grounded and resilient as we were talking about. And so this, inshallah, can increase your capacity to work through some of those things with these people um, and really be, be present with them in relationship. So presence isn't about just having your eyes closed and looking internally. It's really, that's a practicing ground for trying to be in that state while you're engaging with people and and so, and being socially engaged. Um, and so it also means we need to reach out to others in community, not just the people that we're at home with, because as much as we need to do the work with them, they can also, it can also be too much being interacting with the same people all the time, right? And, and so I'm just, you know, encouraging myself and all of us to remain connected with people outside of where we're isolated. And if that means, you know, I hear people saying that they're zoomed out, right? Too many Zoom calls. And, and, I, and I can certainly relate to that. But if this is the only way that we have to connect, it's important to use that tool and to not get zoomed out because uh, we need one another to raise each other up, right? We, we need these mirrors for one another to, to grow and to see the interconnectedness of Allah's reality. This is how we come to know Tawheed is within this multiplicity of relationships and the other. So tomorrow we'll talk about how to carry on with this journey of presence and self-reflection on our own because we'll be moving away from this space, um, but also talking about how to find guidance in that process and how to find your way both by yourself and finding yourself in community. Um, I think this is it's important consideration based on what we've been talking about, based on where we're going. So I have time for a few questions. Uh, by the way, we'll, we'll do, I'll take a few questions that are relevant to the topic today in the next few sessions. I had planned to just have three more sessions, so two more after this, but I've been requested to add an extra session for just question and answer, because I know there's been a lot of questions. I've been trying to answer the questions as they come, as they're relevant, but we'll have one session, inshallah, um, on Thursday to just have it open-ended questions for anything that has come up over this past month. So how do you engage with the community and in community work without losing yourself and the state of mindfulness we might have found during Ramadan, especially because community work can be life absorbing? Yes. Um, I find, so I think I, I've addressed this a little bit just now, but you know, this idea of it being community work being life absorbing, it can be draining. 
right? When we work with people, uh, especially if we're working in a helping capacity, we, if we're giving from ourselves, we will be depleted. And so the, the way to do, you know, the, the goal is that you are filling yourself up in these moments of presence and um, contemplation so that, and connecting into the source, right? This is the whole idea of why contemplation, Islamic contemplation is about connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting with this source so that it's Allah that's filling you up, not yourself. It's not yourself that's coming into this state of presence. You're coming into peace because of your submission to Allah. And so what that has the capacity or ability to do is that when you then give or interact with community, it can be less depleting and less draining because you're not giving from yourself. When we give from ourselves, we have a very limited resource, limited capacity to give from because we are, we are needy, right? We don't have the power. Allah has the power, but we have the ability to tap into that power and to reflect that power. And so it's by staying in remembrance even of that reality, of that notion that it's not us that's giving can help lighten the burden that we take on when we are sort of constantly interacting and engaging and, and getting drained in that way. So how, how do you find peace with not being with people in these times of COVID, especially when I love being with others? Yeah, so I think use the tools that you can you know, use. Um, it's, it's tough. You know, I, I personally much prefer, I wish I could see all of you people and interact with you because there, you know, as much as this is a fantastic tool that we should use, there is a reality to, you know, there's, there's something that happens when hearts are connected in, in physical presence. And there's this notion of suhbah, of being knee to knee, that is actually a physical presence. But we can, we can get close to recreating that. You know, I've, I've, a lot of people have said they feel a sense of community, just even in, in these discussions and seeing the chat on the side and and so we need to use these, these tools, especially in this time, to stay connected. And then, you know, inshallah, we'll, we'll, we'll have time when we can all be together again in person. But for now, let's, let's find ways of reaching out. And we'll, we'll talk about this uh, tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, oh, so there was another part of that question. And the other way around, finding peace or being at ease when being with others if one is not used to it, right? So if you're an introvert like me, uh, you have to put that into balance, you know? So that may be pushing yourself a little bit beyond your comfort zone. And, and you know, so if, if you are with people, with family, you know, if your tendency is to like, I need a break, you know, take that break, but also make sure it's for a time period and, and challenge yourself to engage because this is, is what we're trying to do is, don't just take your the way that you tend towards as this is how I am. You want to grow, right? And and the the aim that you're growing towards is the model of the Prophet. So look at you know, he was engaged with people. So challenge yourself to be engaged with people, but be patient with yourself, right? We do have we do have personalities and tendencies. So so for some people that's difficult. Um, so one step at a time. Uh, just don't stay with what's comfortable for you move a bit out of your comfort zone because that's where the growth happens inshallah okay thank you uh again feel free to we'll i'll still keep track of questions and and try to answer them as they come up in the next three sessions in terms of the content uh, topic relevant but then um please if you have questions that are related to earlier things or or please bring them on Thursday and we can have an open Q and A inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.